Hi everybody, it's Mrs. Peachy from your WCA biology class. Today I'm going to be walking you through the portfolio on biodiversity. This is um, unit two, lesson 12. Okay, so I am in the slide viewer here, lesson 12 of unit two. And this is a fairly easy portfolio, um, but you will need certain supplies in order to um, carry this one out, okay? Okay, so um, the link here is the Diversity Index Lab. So this is going to bring you to a PDF. And since this is the first PDF portfolio that you guys have had to turn in this school year, I want to make sure that we um, properly communicate to you how to save these first before you enter any information into them. Otherwise, what ends up happening is I get a whole bunch of blank PDF documents because they don't save properly. So the best way to do this is to right click on the document and then select Save As. When that happens, you can save it to an easily identifiable location such as your desktop. And perhaps I will call this Biodiversity Portfolio Mrs. Peachy. It does help to put your name on it, okay? So you're going to want to open um, the version that is saved then. You notice this is on my desktop here. So I'm going to click on this and open it. So I'm just going to go ahead and open this with my Adobe Acrobat Reader. And let's see here. Okay, so it is now opening the screen. And it's bringing up this lab, which I'm going to move over to my other screen just so that it's easier for me to look at it. So, um... Now you can see that this is an editable, or editable, this is the document you can edit. And just click in the boxes to type your answers, right? When you're done with this, you can save it. Again, just at this point, you can just click save since you've already saved as. And when you get ready to turn it in, you are going to turn it in to me through the Dropbox in the lesson itself, okay? Now let's go through some of the um, materials that you need for this portfolio. One thing it asks you to use is to use a bag of fruit candies and a bag of chocolate candies. Now it says this because it doesn't want to infringe upon the trademark of M&Ms and Skittles, but really what's asking you to do is get a bag of Skittles and get a bag of M&Ms because each one of them has a variety of different colors in them. So that works out really well. And since it is close to Halloween, you may find it easy to find some good deals. However, you might not want to go out and buy anything. Maybe you don't like candy. Maybe you don't have any money. It's all good. We can make do. So what I have in this bag to represent my first population is I just have a bunch of different colored blacks. Okay? And apparently some hair. So this is going to be my first population. It's going to be kind of like my fruit candy. In my second bag, I put a bunch of different colored beads. So the point is that you have a variety of different colored objects in one bag and in the second bag. Now you want to make sure they're the same objects though because when you pick with your hands, they should all feel the same. If there's different objects in there, you're going to be able to tell with your hands um, what they feel like. You also want to make sure that you have a, a fairly small number of objects, um, of types of objects in there, okay? So you don't want to have like, I don't know, like 30 colored crayons um, and only, you know, one of each because that's not going to help you out. 
if you had picked five colors of crayons and you have, you know, 10 of each color, that'll work fine. So just keep the number of the variety fairly manageable, some, somewhere between maybe four and 10. And make sure you have a roughly the same number of objects in each bag. And I would aim to have maybe a good 20 to 30 objects more at the minimum and, and definitely, you know, upwards from there um, in each bag. Because you want to have, again, a good probability of picking any one of the colors. Okay. So it says pour each of the bags of candy into a separate container so you can see all the colors in each bag. Assign a letter to each color of colored candies and fruit candies and record your key. So I might call these guys blacks. Okay. I'm going to put this guy a bit. There we go. I might call this guy um, blacks. And if I can zoom in just a little bit here. And my colors are just a little bit off, but... So I've got yellow, green, white, blue, red, and that's it. So I'm going to make a key. So I'm going to call my yellow capital Y. I'm going to call my white capital W. Oh, let me put this. Hang on. Capital W is the white. Capital G is my green. Capital B is my blue. And capital R is my red. Okay. Then I have my beads key. You don't want to use the same symbols for each key. Okay. So here in my beads key, I have different colors. So I'm going to use um, lowercase l b to represent light blue. I'm going to use um, I'll use I'll say M B lowercase M B to represent medium blue. Some of you might say that's aqua. I don't want to make it too complicated. Lowercase D B to represent dark blue. Um, lowercase L G to represent light green. M, G, to represent medium green. P, E, to represent peach. P, U, <laughs> that stinks, to represent purple. And I believe that's all of the colors there. Okay. So there's our key. Your key will be different because you will have different stuff. Then it says we're going to do some picks here and we're going to determine the, um, we're going to pick, and, and where it says fruit candy, I mean, you can't really change this here. Although what I could do is I could put, um, I could go to comment. And that would enable me to use some of these tools up here. And I could put a text box right over the top of this. And instead of calling this fruit candy, I could call this blacks. Or whatever that was supposed to be. Okay. That would just make it so that I feel like, oh, okay. I will remember which one is which and I don't have to. Um... Okay. So you can change those by adding these text boxes. And that'll help you maybe feel a little more comfortable about that. 
So my blocks was my population one. And I'm going to do, I'm going to put this on full screen here, but I'm going to do some picks. It asks us to do one, two, three, four, five, six, wait, 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 one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of them, I believe. So let's pick nine times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So if I go back to um, this screen here, I'm going to put the colors in here. This is where I'm going to use my little symbols. B, B, W, I don't remember, R, yellow, 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 red, right? Oh, sorry, red. So the number of different colors you totally get, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Let's try that again. One, two, three, four, five, six. A total of six colors that you get. Okay. That helps. So let me put these guys back. Shake up the bag. And we're going to do this a second time. Okay, and we'll just continue to do fill along the blocks and fill it along the beads. So then you need to figure out what's called the diversity index. So to get the diversity index, you're going to take the total number of um, colors, basically, that you've picked out, and the number of samples in each group. So for trial one, which was my, right here, this was my fruit, remember, which is also um, we, we called this one the blacks. Come on. Just trying to move you. How hard is that? Okay. So we had six, right? Divided by nine. But I don't want you to give me that. I want you to give me um, a number. So 6 divided by 9 is 67, okay, so 0.67 or um, 0 0.67, you could give it a 67%, but that's the diversity index. Remember, your diversity index needs to be less than 1 or equal to 1. It cannot be greater than 1, okay? 1 means if you have a diversity index of 1, um, that means that you would have um, very, very diverse population. So total number, different number of colors divided by the total picks that you did. We did nine picks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. All right, so you're going to do that for three different trials because that time I was lucky and I picked all of my different colors, but it is possible that I might not. It depends. If I have a lot of blues in there and very few yellows and very few, few reds and stuff, I may end up with a lower diversity index. Now, that brings me back to when you originally stocked these. You don't have to put the same number of each color in there. You're going to want to have a random assortment, okay? You're going to have to have a variety, but a random assortment. Finally, you are going to answer all of these follow-up questions in complete sentences. All right? All of these follow-up questions in complete sentences, and save this, and this will be your portfolio. So, I would like to turn right side up and let you know that if you have questions or concerns, feel free to give me a call at extension 2204 or send me a webmail message. Have a great day.